Welcome to the Cinema Rat, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does. And they've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory. Welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about the split between Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner. Now, I was deliberating. Is this worth the Cinema Rag's attention? Given that Joe Jonas hasn't really done movies. Yeah, he's been in some of the Joe Bro movies that were on Disney, but not really. And then Sophie Turner has been in some movies, which we'll talk about in a second but i thought given that both of these people are relatively well known that it would be good to do an episode on this and talk about the real reasons or the alleged real reasons as to why he is divorcing her arse and also go through his dating history because i think it's quite impressive now i'm a heterosexual man so i can't really comment on the joe bros i've always thought that joe jonas was the most handsome of the three jonas brothers May thinks that Nick Jonas, I th- I believe, I think it's she th- he thinks it's Nick. Although I thought Joe was always the most handsome. And if you look at the dating history, I think Joe Jonas's dating history has been the most impressive. Either way, they've been together since 2017. They got married in 2019. They have a two-year-old. And then they have a child that they just had last year whose name has not been revealed. <laughs> it's one of those, like, I'm not going to reveal. Kind of reminds me, even though it's not the same. When Emily Ratajkowski, the, the the model, who I guess does have an acting career, she was in Gone Girl. She played the mistress in Gone Girl. When she had a kid with Sebastian Bear McLeod or whatever his name is, she's like, I'm not going to use any gender pronouns for 18 years. I'm going to let the baby decide what gender it's going to be. And then, I don't know, like a month later, she's calling him he, 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 he. So they broke up. And, and, a couple of things. One, the fact that he's divorcing her is kind of a big deal because we know statistically women initiate divorce. Women initiate divorce 70% of the time when there is a divorce. And if there is a divorce and she is college educated, it doesn't really matter if he's college educated, but typically women, women who are college educated will not marry a man who's not college educated. But if the woman is college educated, then if there is a divorce, 90% of the time she's initiating it. In this case, Joe is initiating it on her. And look, it's not like I know a lot about the Jonas Brothers. I am too old to ever kept up with their music. I do know some of DNCE songs like Cake by the Ocean, which is a reference to course sex. I, that song's catchy, but I can't say I'm, I'm big into the Joe Bro catalog. But what I can say, what I what I sense from the Joe Bros is that they're overall a conservative group. And it's not a conservative family. And it's not because, you know, they were all into the virgin, virginity code and all that and wearing their purity rings when they were younger. And it wasn't actually until Jonas, uh, Joe Jonas's fourth girlfriend that he lost his virginity. It's not just that. It's just... They strike me as a conservative kind of family, and they strike me as a family that takes marriage seriously. You saw, I think it's Kevin Jonas. One of them has been married, got married very young, and is still married. And then the other one is married to Priyanka Chopra. I think that marriage is likely going to lead to divorce, but we'll see. And so I think it took a lot. It's a big deal that Joe would initiate divorce on a, a woman especially a woman who has an infant child. They have two young children. So the rumors is that Sophie is a big partier. And and that's the reason that he's divorcing her. And if you read between the lines, it looks like she's got a drinking problem. It's it's not, it's not, it's, it's one thing like, you know, oh, I like to have drinks here and there. But if you read between the lines, it seems like she has a major drinking problem. She was likely drinking during the marriage, uh, I'm sorry, during the the pregnancy of the second child and continues to drink. And, and that's what, if you read between the lines, and Joe was like, I've tried everything. Of course, these are all the sources from the family. And we have not heard from Sophie Turner's side. But 
the 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 narrative is kind of like he's tried everything they've gone to counseling they they've tried to convince her to stop drinking and she's just got a major drinking problem and we'll know because if she's contrite or look if she acknowledges she has a drinking problem or and or she's contrite you might see her ending up going to rehab and then you know that there's actually something legitimate there she might just be, you know, double down and be like, I don't know, Joe, 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 he's a dirtbag. He'll use the classic four things that women call men to initiate leaving them. Narcissist, controlling, psychological abusive, cheater. And cheater, maybe he didn't cheat, maybe he was just watching porn. Cheater. So we'll see how this plays out. I think that's what it is because I think Joe Jonas is the type of guy that's like, I got married and incidentally, if you look at the age difference, he's 34, she's 27. So they got married relatively young. She was getting, she got married at the at the tail end of Game of Thrones. And I think, yes, they're Hollywood, you know, Hollywood divorces tend to be higher. But I think the Jonases are more of that kind of mid, Midwestern stock type. And I think that Joe's intention when he got married was to be married for life. And I think he wouldn't be pulling this if he didn't feel like, Perhaps Sophie was a danger to his children and that Sophie couldn't get her drinking together or had no interest in getting her drinking together. Now, maybe there is a chance, if there's any women listening, you're probably like, good Joe, divorce her so we can be together. Uh, there is a chance that he's filing divorce and kind of like you see played out with the alcoholics, sometimes they have to hit rock bottom and you just talk to them, talk to them, talk to them and nothing ever works until, until you eventually have to do something. So maybe he's like, I'm divorcing you. Sorry. And maybe this will push her to realize I'm losing my husband. I'm losing my two kids or at least time with my two kids. I think they're, he's asking for shared custody, which would then undermine the fact that she's got a severe drinking problem. See, if he was asking for full custody, that would kind of go along with that. But maybe she'd be like, you know, I'm going to lose this guy. He's taking this seriously. And maybe she'll go to rehab and maybe he'll reconsider. Either way, maybe he's divorcing her because she's just not a good actress. So let's go through her her filmography here. As I mentioned, she's 27. She really broke big with Game of Thrones. Before Game of Thrones, she was not really well known. In fact, it was her first television uh, role. And she did that for eight years. She played Sansa Stark. And I watched Game of Thrones in season one and I thought she was fine in, in, in the show. I mean, I don't think she was some great revelation. And I don't think she was one of the better actresses who was in that great show. So early on, she started doing some movies. Let's take a break. I wanted to let you know about some of the other feeds here at the Eclectico Gregorio. The oldest one we have is the Awakened Man, which mostly deals with holistic health, medical cover-ups, ways to biohack your life, to ensure longer longevity, medical conspiracies, and naturopathic stuff. We also have, and that there's probably about 400, 500 episodes over there. We started that one back in 2017, 2016, I believe. We also have the Female Holistic Health Apothecary, which originally started as an essential oils feed. And there's about a hundred episodes on essential oils, particular essential oils like rose and lavender and sandalwood and so forth. And then later I morphed it into more topics that are regarded for female health, female specific. We've had that feed also since 2016. And then lastly, we have Confessions of an Obese Child, which deals with my childhood obesity and trauma that came from it. So it's a great feed for those who dealt with childhood trauma that led you to have addictions to alcohol or food and I interview several people and what it was like to grow up overweight and all the difficulties of losing the weight and then keeping it off and trying to metamorphosize into a regular weighted person. So check out those feeds at the Eclectical Gregory on Apple or Spotify. She started doing movies after a few years of Game of Thrones and Game of Thrones really got big but Really, you could say that her movies are essentially the X-Men movies. And it, this would not be a stretch to say that when she entered the X-Men movies, they got crappy. Because if you look at X-Men First Class, the first one of the movies, that one was great. And then they just subsequently got worse. 
X-Men Days of Future Past was, eh. and look, if you look at the cast, I mean, these are talented people. You got McAvoy, you got my boy Fastbender, you got J-Law, oh, I don't think he's that good of an actress, Oscar Isaac, Nicholas Holt, Rose Byrne, A Sexy Saturday. I mean, you got some decent actors in this. She enters this, and gosh, the last two iterations of the X-Men movies were just horrifically bad. X-Men Apocalypse was 2016. Uh, and then after that, she did a movie called Josie, where she plays a Lolita high school girl. That movie didn't go anywhere. And she plays a, she's in a movie called Time Freak. That didn't go anywhere. Then she does Dark Phoenix. And in that movie, if you didn't know, Jennifer Lawrence's character dies. And I think everyone was just hoping to die in that movie. <laughs> just get it. I mean, if you watch that movie, you could tell everybody's paycheck in it. They're like, please, for the love of God, end this franchise. And then 2019 is also on Game of Thrones. Uh, final season was done. And then after that, she did a couple of movies, Every Last Secret. Every Last Secret has no description on this movie. Then she has a movie called Do Revenge. And she is not even in the fourth or fifth billing of Do Revenge. It's it's run by Camila Mendez and Maya Hawk. That tells you how bad things have been going there. And then in television, she's done some stuff, Game of Thrones, but nothing of consequence. Uh, she's done The Prince, which is a, an HBO animated series. She did something called The Staircase. That's got Colin Firth in it. That's over at HBO. It's got Tony Collette in it as well. And Sophie Turner is like the seventh lead. So again, not much going on in her career. And look, you could argue that some of it is that she's had now two kids since 2019. Or you could argue that she train wrecked X-Men and people aren't going to cast her. Now, let me pivot over to Joe. Joe Jonas not surprising, because again, I think he is the most handsome of the Jonas Brothers. And I think he's the tallest as well. He's dated some beautiful women. He started out with AJ Machalka. I don't particularly know her from the Disney world, but I believe she was in the roommate movie with Minka Kelly. And she plays the friend who Leighton Meester rips off her nipple piercing. She's a cool, attractive woman. Then she dates, then he dates, I'm sorry, Taylor Swift in 2008. Of course, she writes some songs about that. And he wrote some songs about that, but they didn't date too long. Then he dates Camilla Bell, who I thought about doing as a sexy Saturday, but I decided uh, to do another brunette. Because I've, I've, I've done sexy Saturdays all the way in December, so I'm not going to spoil what brunette I decided to do instead of Camilla Bell. Camilla Bell was an actress who was kind of up and coming about 10, 15 years ago. She was in The Ballad of Jack and Rose, which was done by uh, Rebecca Miller. who's the She's the daughter of Arthur Miller, the famous playwright, and the wife of Daniel Day-Lewis. She plays a, a girl. Uh, a, a, it's a strange movie where she and, and her father, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, have a, a strange kind of incestual relationship. But it's a coming-of-age kind of movie, small movie, and then after that, she really didn't do much, but she's attractive. She's attractive. Then he goes to Demi Lovato. He dates Demi Lovato from the Camp Rock world. They dated. And then Ashley Green, who is from Twilight, she played uh, one of the, the um, one of the colons. I think it was Alice. And they were dating in 2010. Uh, that's at the peak of Twilight. And he lost his virginity to her. So, look, he had three girlfriends. It, it, I mean, this is how you know they're conservative. They had three girlfriends. He had three girlfriends before losing his virginity. So he took that stuff seriously. So he loses his virginity um, with her. Then he dates a, a woman named Blanda Eggenschweiler. who looks like a model. They dated... All the way to 2014, so 2011 to 2014. Then he dates Gigi Hadid, and say what you want about Gigi Hadid, but she's an attractive woman. They dated from 2014 uh, to 2015, and then she monkey branched really fast to Zayn Malik, who she later had a kid with. And he's even on record saying, I think it's interesting that she moved on so quickly. I mean, it was definitely very quickly. It's like, well, Joe, you don't understand hypergamy. You don't understand the war bride syndrome, so why don't you... Delve into some red pill stuff. Then in 2015, he dates a woman by the name of Juliana Hertz. 
And that was the last one. But And then he dates Sophie Turner. And Sophie Turner, look, I, I, she has an aquiline nose. I think she's got pretty blue eyes, but... And I, I don't mind the red hair, but her, her nose is a little too aquiline for my taste. And I just don't think she's classically beautiful. And if you look at the other women that he's dated, I think, um, well, I think Gigi Hadid, I think by far is probably much better looking than Sophie Turner. But Joe Jonas has options. So if this isn't a ploy to convince her to go to rehab for her alleged apparent drinking problem, Joe Jonas worth millions of dollars and good looking and young will have no problems finding a new wife. And that's all, with all divorces, you know, we pray for the children, especially these children who are so young. Guys, I'll post posting at the Cinnamon Rack Facebook group and over at Spotify. Of course, you can post comments. You let me know what you think of the de- of this breakup, if you think it's legit or if it's just uh, something to get her into rehab. I'd love to hear from you. Please rate and review because it helps the algorithm grow this channel. Every rate and review counts on Spotify and on Apple. There's a link in the episode notes for PayPal. There's also a link in the episode notes uh, for the EclecticoGregorio.com website, which hosts my four podcast feeds and also has hundreds of articles. Until next time, take care. God bless. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.